Okay, so here we go into part two where we're going to do even some more detailed adjustments in Photoshop to our picture. This is where I left you right here at Camera Raw, and uh, this is well, this has already had all the adjustments we did in Camera Raw, and now it's time to bring it into Photoshop. And all we're going to do is click Open the Image, and take a little time here because I'm also running video and everything else, so we. Uh, Got a lot going on. All right, so there's our image in Photoshop. One of my first things I like to do um, when processing one of these images, image, adjustments, levels. Sometimes I just like to get off the edges here just a little bit. And then my primary adjustment here using middle. Not a big change there, but enough, right? And again, looks a little bit more like a night sky. I like this down here to be... Uh, oh, well, that's still pretty bright. We'll see. We'll work on it, okay? Now here's a little trick that sometimes works really good, sometimes doesn't. We'll give it a try. I'm going to create a second layer here. A couple ways to do that. Here's an easy one. Layer, duplicate layer. Boom. Just call it a background copy. And I've made a second layer right here. That way, the adjustments that I uh, are going to do right now are just going to be on this particular layer. And I can apply them, not apply them, or just apply them as a, a percentage. Sometimes I like to go image and auto color. Boom. Kind of interesting here when you do that. And you can see we can turn that on and off. This is what we had. This is where. But it kind of added some color to the Milky Way here. It added its own little warmness there. Now, I don't like that completely, but I like a little bit of what it did there. Matter of fact, I might even try the auto tone too. There we go. So that, you can kind of see what it did there. A little bit of more, a little bit more red tone. Got, gave me some extra things to work with. I don't like that completely, so I'm going to turn down the uh, opacity of this particular layer, only apply it a little bit, and so maybe about 70%, so there is with it applied, there's with it not. I kind of like it, kind of like it, and it's something to look at, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does, but it's giving me a little bit more colors to work with. So I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to go to layer and flatten. And I'm going to keep those adjustments right there. Okay. Now, uh, looking at this, it's not too bad. I use Nick plugins, and that's what this bar is right here. I'll bring it into the screen for a second. And I think I'm going to try a couple Nick plugins on this. I'm going to go to Color Effects Pro and click on that. We're going to create this. And we're going to start off again. I like to warm things up a little bit. If you ever look at my pictures, you'll always see they're a little warmer. And one of my favorite ways to warm things up is with the skylight filter. And that's what I just applied right here. It gives a nice little warm glow, but I don't want too much. Okay, but now I'm going to leave it a little bit more because the next thing I'm going to apply uh, is going to be pretty dramatic. And I'm not going to want to apply this 100% in, uh, in the layer. So I'm going to add a filter here. Then I'm going to apply tonal contrast. I'm going to do some tone mapping. Boom. Look at that. All right. So here, and look at the dramatic, what it did here. Now this is, now you're starting to, even with my camera now, you're starting to get some grain here. But look at what it did to the sky. It really just brought things to life, made things very, very dramatic. Now, do I want that much? Probably not, but remember, I'm just making a layer here. So, uh, I'm gonna apply it. Try, And I'm going to say okay to apply this. And I'll get rid of this, because I don't need it now. So now I've got this much more dramatic picture, right? But I don't want it that dramatic, right? From that 
to that. That's pretty crazy. Plus down below. So I'm going to turn down the opacity here so that it doesn't apply quite as crazy dramatically. I'll turn it down. Still like it pretty well though. Turn it down to about maybe 85. So I'm still getting it, but now and I really don't like it as much down here. So here's a little trick right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my quick selection tool and I'm going to select, well, actually let's do it a different way. I'm going to create a mask right here by clicking this little icon down here. See it? Click this and that creates a mask. And then I'm going to use my adjustment brush and paint white just about, yeah. 50% opacity and flow right here. So this is going to be apply. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say I don't want this mask applied quite so harshly to this section of the photograph. This is just a little bit too much down here. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to paint down here. And so that's what that's doing is it's saying not as much effect on this section of the photograph. And the more I paint it, the less that effect is down here. So you can see that. You can see hardly now any of that effect is on the road, but there's still a little adding some drama, which is kind of nice, right? So this is the effect that we've made. Boom, the sky is popping much more. You can really see that. Not so much down here where there'd be too much noise and grain. So there we go. Okay, and I'm going to bring these layers together now. Layer, flatten image. But now I'd like down here to be just a little brighter. I want people to see that just a little more. So now I'm going to take my quick selection tool right here and I'm going to select the sky. There we go. Well, wait, I'm going to. Sorry about that. Select, deselect. I'm going to create another layer. I'll show you a different way to do it. I'm just on my highlight. I'm going to right click and just say duplicate layer. Background layer, we'll call it again. There it is. So now I'm going to apply my adjustment brush right here. And now I'm going to select the sky. And this adjustment brush just does a real, look at that. Look at how easily. And that, we've got such a perfect horizon here. And it's just, it's an easy selection. I really didn't want to select the sky. What I want to select is down here. So I'm going to say select inverse. Boom. Uh, and now I'm going to only apply these adjustments to this area that's selected. And so I'm going to come up here to image adjustment. I'm going to go back to my levels. There's a lot of different ways to do this, but in this case, I'm going to do my levels. And I'm going to bring this up so that this is a little lighter. Kind of crazy, huh? So I'm only applying this right here. I'll still come down because I want some contrast. I want you to be able to see all the cool stuff that's in the road. This is a real country dirt road, authentic. And so there we are. Now you can really see the fence post. You can really see everything. And maybe right about there. So you really got a sense of that. And we'll say, OK. There we are. So you can see the difference I made right there. Dark. Now it's lighter. Now you can really see it. OK. Layer. Flatten this image. Select. Deselect. So that's kind of an interesting little picture right there. One last thing that sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but it's there. It's, I'll show it to you if you're interested in it, if you want it. And I have a filter, a plugin that I've purchased from a company called uh, uh, Photo Digital Pro Digital Software Star Spikes. And we'll show you what this does. I click on Star Spikes Pro 3 here, and we it opens the image in this separate program that's a plugin to. Photoshop. So 
take in a sec, guys. I got a lot of stuff running here. All right, so here you can see. I can show you what it does. All it does is picks a few of the brighter stars and makes them pop a little bit more. And I'll show you right here. Basically, see, I don't like that, but let's see right there. It's taking this one star and giving it a little bit of a star pop. And we can increase like the quantity. And let's say I want you to try and find a few more stars. So I'll say 35. And I'll look at the effect. Yeah, still not finding many. Let's go to 45. Yeah. Let's go to 55. Because it can look totally fake if you do it too much. So I'm doing it in increments. So there we go. It's found these stars and saying, okay, these are the ones I am going to make pop. And basically, it's real subtle. As I'll turn on and off the preview. I'm like, Dave, I hardly see anything. But this star now it has, and we can increase the length of the spikes there maybe a little bit. Maybe just to show you. And again, it's just taking one or two stars, making them pop a little bit more. When you do, say OK here. And really, when you do tone mapping like I've already done, eh, you probably don't need to do this too much because it already does a little bit of that. And just going back in the history, see a little bit of the difference maybe one star one or two stars pop just a little bit more and I don't know I think I'm done I think that's about it I mean it's an interesting contrast between the colors up uh, up top and the road and the green grass it's definitely reflective of the little um, adventure we had out there I mean this is this is what it was all about got a little bit of that air pollution down there or the light pollution and that's my finished image. I, I kind of like it, kind of like the way it came out. I don't really need to crop it or anything. I think we're good to go. And so that'll be it. I'm going to go file, save. I'll save it uh, as a TIFF or a JPEG, and then I'll be done. And that's it for part two. Thank you for watching. Uh, hope your images are coming out great. Hope you really like it. Thanks again so much for coming to American Photo Tracks workshop. We really enjoy having you. We, we love sharing this stuff. It's just so much fun. Thanks again. All right. Bye-bye.